At the precipice of a cliff, we stand and overlook a great mountain of a B-word. It's clear she intends to march forward, but she advises her loyal simp, Jonah, to go back. Jonah refuses, thinking this is his one shot to be alone with the mysterious Croft. Lara doesn't yet have it in her to make it known. She only has eyes for one hoe. That's me. <laughs> go to bed, bitch. Okay, look, this video has a lot of tawdry jokes about girls, so I leveled the playing field to keep boys clutching their pearls. One thing led to another and I'm now in love with Lara Croft. Like, comment, and subscribe if you think I deserve a thorough spanking. Honey Fang. She uses him anyway, like she should, because any principled hot girl knows simps are free labor. <laughs> She struggles across the mountaintop like it's a tightrope, and it's odd with it being so cold. The only helpful thing I can think of is boy. I bet she's feeling a bite in some other place that's tight. Dirt shooter, raspberry jam maker, the ground breaks from beneath her, the rock and snow shatters below what I'm sure are very soft feet. It's a perfect opportunity for Jonah to be a white knight. And with being a heroic manly, heroic man, I'm sure he now expects Lara to take his pathetic rice seed. He's a chronic liquidator. If that's all that comes out, he's gonna be all like, Spawn in belly! I can feel it. And grow within you. More prophetic little incels. Ha! And no, she thinks to herself, I would rather die a virgin. After Lara's nippy encounter of the first kind, we find ourselves appropriately dressed in Southern America and fashion before bad weather. She notices a flashlight in the room of her home, I think intruder. Lara read a horoscope today. No death, all is good in the neighborhood, the boogie. Miraculously, the flashlight grows eyes. But it wastes its time looking at a board of fanfic cults and weirdos. Rookie mistake. The first place I'd be going is the hamper for dirty underwear. <laughs> But nobody asks me. Filled with ego and hubris, Lara endangers herself by entering her own apartment. The audacity, she pretends as if she didn't just see something and closes the window because it's cold and it's drafty. I agree with her. We don't want her getting the sniffles or any more hard nipples. We catch up with Lara being all pouty towards the chauffeur. I'm assuming he's another sim. They're everywhere and they're a plague. But other than dealing with that, things are going great for Lara until they go bad. Turns out the simp is trying his hand at pimp as he sold her out to a man with a case of helicopter face. The car's shot, rolls and topples, and Lara hobbles my hair out. Okay. She sent flying off a grip. Luckily her tits offer enough grip, slowing enough to stick a pick, breaking her fall to land on a precipice. Oh look, we're in the snowy mountains of Tahoe and definitely not a desert of Arabia. Lara regains her composure. She finds her feet and I find her ass being gripped in tight pants. Damn. After staring for too long, or not long enough, Lara limps up a conveniently laid path. She slaps some Taylor Swift on to feel empowered and to instill a go-get'em attitude. And I'll tell you this, Swift's nominating the charts at the moment, so you know she's got a firm hand. I like that. What I also like is Lara's Jigglypuff ass, but sadly, I can't slap her Jigglypuff ass, but I can slap some sense into her by putting some glasses on her fashion, Lara. Obviously, I do this to remind her that she's a girl, she can't have dreams, and thus only exists to be the object of male desire. <laughs> Dear God. We'll call it the, uh, something something dumb fallacy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we use Lara's strong legs to make short work of a treacherous mountain face, then take a moment to watch the sunset and enjoy a perky view, and then slip Lara for a dark, muddy, muddy hole. We come across a pillar with a bunch of gibberish written on it. Lara pretends she can read and says, Prophet. She's shocked, and I'm shocked, because what the hell is going on with those glasses, Lara? We discover a couple ancient murals, but then risk the integrity of the room and thus the relics by smashing in a wall. It was worth it all, because I come across a really good view. Oh. Damn, look at how that moves. Careful, Lara. Not about falling to your death. No, no, no. The snapping of the wood part. Lay off the chocolate biscuits or you'll turn into one of those short, insipid, woe is me fat guys who gets angry when no skinny hoe gives them any attention. Huh? She shimmies down a dark crack. Not unlike my own. There's even a breeze. I don't have a rotten corpse down my alley, though. Although the smell I unleash toward my doctor may say otherwise, this tomb we're invading and trying to steal from tries to kill us with a booby trap. <laughs> Rude. Well, we escape from the trap in the same way Lara escaped the trap of boys, babies, and mariage. Sheer dumb luck. And a pistol. The year is 2023, ladies, and in spite of man's best efforts, it is the single greatest time to be a modern girl in the modern world in a modern West. We make it through the body of water, but I'm immediately depressed. Her body hasn't become exposed from the wet. Drying off, we emerge from the fog. We stand and gaze upon a sacred temple. Yeah. That's sacred, all right. With all these destructive actions, I begin to question, does Lara even care about the long-term effects that comes with disturbing ecological structures? 
Nah, she just wants to swim. Go behave. And I guess that Taylor Swift propaganda infused her me, 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 gotta get that bag and screw everyone else kind of attitude. I love that for her. Environmental damage is caused by normies breathing, so it's their problem to fix. That's what Big Oil told me to believe, so that is what I'm going to believe. I got Lara's back, so I hop her over the traps. Lara seems to be finding herself in a lot of water. I feel bad for her, so unselfishly provide her with more fitting clothing. So selfless. Not an ounce of self-serving at all. Oh, oh, yeah. Meow. Meow. In our new fit, we can finally get round to tomb raiding. We shoot a counterbalance and mine some rubbles, and there, we raided a tomb. No, no bad, pussycat. Bad, Lara. You're on camera, girl. She puts those haunches to work and exhumes a grave. It's empty. But she's shown a total disregard for sanctity of life. That's kind of hot. Bad bitch. Four minions and their leader who could be anywhere between the age of 30 to 70 though. If he were British he could be just a day over 20. He will make a rapid decline into Smeagol territory over here, repel on the scene and investigate the tomb. But where is our Lara? Well, she's very clever you see so. She hopped inside the tomb, trapping herself, closing her eyes and started hoping that bad guys would just go away. And not look at it, inspect it and try to pry it open. Four rifles versus one handgun or wait. She's the main character. These guys don't stand a chance. She doesn't need it though, as this slick piece of work stole the detonator. And like a lot of girls who don't get their way, she chooses destruction. And a good point to make here is that, unlike most boys in this situation of public detonation, Lara actually has to deal with the consequences of her actions. Life can be so unfair towards women. I visit the princess's palace. It's clear she spent the last two days learning the PR dating history of, I don't know, Tomothy Clamachan, please, this obsession. Can somebody please tell me why a girl would do this? I think Emma Roberts is cute, but I wouldn't spend the entire day reading about her life. Oh wait, I did do that. Lara cuddles her picture book of human stick insect Tommy Clamamay, and I think about what Emma Roberts might be eating today. Our delusions are shattered when a five foot one man, clearly taking up assassin work to compensate for his lack of height, attacks us and makes off of the book. She shoots the air to let her know she's mad at him. After somehow surviving an avalanche, Lara lands cold, injured and shivering. She's just a babe in need of warmth. I need to find shelter and would you believe it? We come across a deserted, rundown teepee and it's campfire. Just 20 meters out from the runout zone, talk about baking McMuffins. I see to it that Lara's in more comfortable clothing, fit for the climate and definitely not my own pleasure. Jiggle, 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 damn good jiggle physics. It's just left, right, left, right. But games always is fun. I mean, what isn't fun about running around picking up materials to craft items with meaningless stats and gaining experience points that allow Lara to suddenly learn how to assassinate some loser of a man. Just tell him you have a boyfriend, Lara. That'll do the job. Even though you don't and you don't want one and given the state of things, you'll probably just marry a girl. If you thought you were going to be raiding tombs and connecting clues, I've got news for you. In this game, you sneak through bushes and climb trees and kill multiple things and watch little Lara become a prolific murderer. Well, kinda. Color me impressed. That is some incredible AI work. I make a stop at Build-A-Bear because Lara is another 35 year old woman who is allowed to get away with behaving like an infant, being all dainty and speaking like a 5 year old is cute. Meanwhile, I've been called a young man ever since like 10 when I feel the same as I did when I was 8. After gassing the bear, I charge into its cave looking for bear cubs. I don't find second breakfast, but I do find a tunnel that opens up into an ice cave that's just borderline magical and surely houses a Disney princess. After committing the cardinal sin of wetting denim, Lara dries herself by a conveniently placed fire, and I start contemplating our current situation, I think. Why is there a fire here, in an ice cave? Who made it? When? Why hasn't it melted the ice cave? Where is Elsa? Age-old questions that need answering. Hmm, the fancy denim doesn't dry, so we're back to the swimsuit, Lara. Come on. Finally, a tomb to raid. Well, I say tomb, I mean ship super glued to a cliff. We crank a wheel and then bruise a testicle, you know, typical tomb raiding stuff. Now, and you didn't hear this from me, but rumor is they spent more time developing the booty physics than they did making sure the game was fun. Wow. Down. Go down, Lara. Lara, please. Go down, no, dive. You need to go down, Lara. Lara, please. It's like trying to get a bobbing apple to stay underwater. Oh. I'm aghast as a homely girl graces my screen. It's now pretty clear that Lara had a glow up. She looks a bit like Kendall Jenner. Though, I'm not too sure if it's pre or post surgery, so I feel dirty. Dirty good. Damn, Lara.